In this video, we're going to focus on parallel lines with alternate angles. In the previous video, we saw that angle G3 and angle H2 are equal because they are corresponding angles. But we also know that at point G, angle G1 is the same size as angle G3 because they are vertically opposite angles. And we can do the same at point H and say that H4 is also 80 degrees. And now that we know all four of these angles are equal, we can, with even less information, also say that angle G3 will be equal to angle H4. These two angles are called alternate angles because they lie on alternate or opposite sides of our transversal and on alternate sides, the top and the bottom of the parallel lines. Remember that in the previous video I mentioned each of the properties of parallel lines has a letter that you can look for to identify the property. Corresponding angles, it was an F. For alternate angles, you should look for an N or a Z, along with your parallel lines. In this case, the two angles formed are then equal in size. In the given sketch, we can connect angle G3 with angle H4 using such a Z. So these two angles are equal. And just like with our corresponding angles, this N or Z can be flipped around and stretched. So in our sketch, we can form another Z, which connects G2 with H3. And now we know that these two angles will also be equal. Let's have a look at some examples. Example one, determine the size of X and Y. In the sketch, you will notice that we have two parallel lines. That means we can be on the lookout for an F or an N. If I start off by drawing angle X, you can see that I can form an N, which means angle X is 99 degrees. So writing this down, I need to add the correct reason, which now will be alternate angles. And just like with corresponding angles, you always need to add the pair of parallel lines because those angles are only equal if the lines are parallel. With angle X being 99 degrees, we can make use of angles on a straight line to determine the size of Y. So Y will be 180 degrees minus the 99 degrees of X because angles on a straight line add up to 180. This means that Y is 81 degrees. Example two, determine the size of X, Y and Z in alphabetical order. This means I have to start at X. In the sketch, we have two pairs of parallel lines. Firstly, we have JK and OP, and then we have AB parallel to GI. The two pairs of parallel lines means that you will have many different options of alternate angles. I'm going to start off by forming angle X. Can you see that I can continue and form a Z? And these two lines are parallel. This means I can say that X will be 80 degrees. So angle X is 80 degrees. And my reason for this is alternate angles. Again, I have to add the specific pair of parallel lines that I used. And in this case, we used the blue pair AB parallel to GI. As we now continue to angle Y, you will realize that the more properties you know, the more options you will have to determine the same angle. For angle Y, you could have chosen to say that angle Y is vertically opposite and that means 80 degrees. Or you could have seen that if you use the parallel lines, you can form an upside down F, which means we have corresponding angles with angle X and then Y is also 80. 
I'm going to choose to, as I write down y is equal to 80, supply the reason vertically opposite angles. Finally, we need to determine the size of z. Can you see that we can form an n with angle y? And the two lines were given as parallel, which means that angle z is the same size as angle y, which means z is equal to 80 degrees. And again, my reason in this case will be alternate angles. This time, however, we used the green pair of parallel lines, and that will be JK parallel to OP. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the third property of parallel lines, co-interior angles.